Hi, this is Rhett with TestingTheory.com, and today I want to talk to you about speed versus control. I want to show you an example of a test we recently ran where we could have controlled for everything, but where there was more benefit in going faster with speed. As you're doing your own testing, you'll have to make this trade-off. When should we control and isolate every single variable versus when should we go faster by not isolating everything? So we had just recently run a series of navigation tests, and one of the last navigation tests, we wanted to try alternate words to some of the words in the navigation. So for example, instead of life help, we want to try life. Rather than taking every single word and making one variation to isolate one word and one variation to isolate the next word, we decided that we would take the control versus all the new words in one variation. So it was just two variations. And the, the strategist that I was working with said, why don't we create a variation to at least isolate this word, one word? And I was like, well, why would we do that? And he said, so we can isolate the variable so we know for sure. And my response was, well, we don't want to do that because of speed. We want to go faster. By not perfectly controlling for every single little change, we were able to do the test much faster by only having one variation. We were able to get results much faster by only, having, only needing enough traffic for two variations instead of, instead of 10. Now, there are certain reasons why I feel okay about doing this, whereas normally I might say, no, you need to isolate these variables and have a better test design. So we're going to talk a little bit about when you should isolate variables perfectly, when you should try and go faster with more speed. And it's not an exact answer. Testing is not an exact science. If you've done any testing at all, you know there isn't the exact way to get from point A to point B. There's so many options in between. And so even though I'm trying to teach this principle of when you should go fast and when you should isolate, the reality is it's a hard decision to make and you're going to have to evaluate those with your own tests that you're doing. There's no clear cut answer to how to do this. But there may be a few principles that I can teach you that will help you better estimate and understand when you should go faster and when you should isolate. The first principle to keep in mind is that there's definitely a trade-off when you're isolating every variable. The more variables you isolate, the more variations you need. The more variations you need, the more traffic you need to get to statistical significance into the test. So the more isolation you do, the slower you go. That's just the reality of it. So the first principle is you have to weigh that trade-off of going fast versus creating more variations. There's a trade-off. If we don't recognize there's a trade-off, we've, we've partly already failed. And the second and most important principle that I can give you to know if you should go faster or if you should control for everything, speed versus control, is to ask if the business question changes. If you have multiple variations that all line up to the exact same business question, there could be a chance that you can answer those questions without controlling for everything. Now, this navigation test is a great example of it because we can still compare each variation by comparing the old versus the new, even though the things surrounding it aren't perfectly controlled for. We can compare the interaction of one word here in this variation to the other word in this variation. So that makes a very simplified analysis. If the analysis becomes more complex because you have other variations or factors, then there's a chance that you may not want to go for speed and you may want to control for more things. But this is exactly like a baseline test. If you watch my other video on the baseline test, you know that in a baseline test, we're changing lots of things all at once to see which things work better. We're not controlling for individual variables. And the reason why is because we want to go faster. You want to just throw it out there and see what sticks. And the baseline test is a great way to do that. The hope of the baseline test is that you get a massively better experience because you've changed lots of things. It's the same with this navigation test. We could have isolated every single thing and been exactly sure of which things mattered, but it was already to me a lower value test. I know that if I'm making a simple text change in a navigation word, um, the odds of it being monumental aren't that great. So rather than taking a lot of time to get a very small incremental gain, I'd rather do them all at once, get that out of the way and move on to something that's probably more valuable. So there's, there's two spectrums here. Sometimes you want speed when you have massive opportunities for gain, like a baseline test. And sometimes you want speed when the thing you're testing is maybe small and the, the, the likelihood of getting a good gain on that is low. So speed becomes your ally at these two ends of the spectrum where you have little opportunity and you have a lot of opportunity. So in summary, this is a principle that you should practice applying in your testing, but it's a tricky one. Normally we're advocating for isolating every variable to make sure that you know why something won. But there's an idea that if you do that all the time, you're going to be very slow in what you do. And there's a trade-off at the two ends of the spectrum. Sometimes you want to go fast because the opportunity is low, and sometimes you want to go fast because there's a ton of opportunity, and you want to capitalize on that opportunity. So as you're prioritizing and evaluating your test ideas, remember the trade-off of speed versus control. 
Remember that sometimes you may want to go faster at the expense of controlling for everything because by going faster, you can get more results faster. By getting more results, you get better testing and more conversions. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me that thumbs up so I know that you liked it. You can also visit me at testingtheory.com where you can learn more about better testing and how to get more conversions with your tests.